Well, it's certainly been a long time since I've done one of these videos. Let's be honest, uh, you know, I can make excuses, say it's a laptop or say I don't like doing it on my phone, but it comes down to laziness really, doesn't it? What I'm uh, going to talk about today is uh, Nine Men. Nine Men uh, yesterday afternoon or yesterday evening, whatever way you want to look at it, who were heroic, absolutely heroic. Went down to 10 men with uh, within 38 minutes and then 9 from 66 minutes. Now, obviously I'll speak about the sendings off first and foremost. With Morelos is sending off, I mean it's the second time he's been sent off this season. Was sent off obviously against Aberdeen and okay, yeah, that was overturned. And then he was sent off again last night and again, it's sort of yesterday. And again, it's the same thing. It's the descent, it's... It's uh, you know it's it's good that he plays on the edge, and that he um it's it's a good part of his character, but there's playing on the edge and then there's not knowing where the line is and I think that unfortunately he's at that that point where he doesn't really know what the line is, and when he's playing in matches you're kind of concerned thinking oh man is he going to get sent off because he always just seems to get involved. But I, I'm not um, of, the, of the kind of mindset like other people that we should sell him or, or anything. I think, obviously, you have to keep kind of working on him and saying, saying to him, listen, you can't really be doing that. Uh, as far as as far as being a player for Rangers and uh, his, work, his work ethic and knowing what it means to play for Rangers, I think he's he's got all of that down, but I think he just needs to work on his disciplinary. The... Uh, the First goal for sorry the the goal that Ufa scored was of course a yard offside. So last night the the referee certainly was not within our, our favour. Flanagan sending off was quite frankly nothing short of a disgrace. How how do you jump up for a ball without going up with your arms? He, he doesn't swing his elbow or anything. It's just a very 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 poor decision to be honest. You're kind of wondering if it was only uh, players that were in the Rangers shirts that were actually going to get booked. Or was was the UFA players capable of making a foul? But what those players achieved last night was was absolutely outstanding, and I'm I'm going to touch on that in a wee second. But just you know, a wee uh, trip down memory rope, memory uh, lane, of course. For those of you that seen a video that I done regard regarding Rangers, but I think probably about fourteen months ago, it was a uh, Pedro Caxinha's first uh, European tie, and we went out to Progress Nidacorn, which. One of the most embarrassing defeats in in our history, and uh, obviously I was speaking about the the time about that and saying, well, you know, does he does he, should he go? And of course now he's gone, and Mercy came in, and he's he's gone as well. And obviously the the club was really on its knees there in the summer, and you're kind of wondering who who's going to come in and turn it around, especially if the the kind of funds aren't there, but. I mean that 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 problem certainly seems to be uh, not really a, that big a problem. We certainly did spend money in the summer, and when you hear uh, about Gerard coming in, you're kind of thinking, hmm. former player. You know you've seen things like these not working out before with Alan Shearer at Newcastle, of course, and Barnes at Celtic. You um you, you see obviously players who are obviously were great players and not working out as managers. But then when I heard that Gary McAllister was going to come in as his assistant, I thought, well, that, that's a masterstroke because it's someone that has managerial experience. And what he's achieved at Rangers in this short period of time has been nothing short of remarkable. He's, he's been absolutely brilliant. The fact of the matter is he's come into a club that last season conceded, I think the, the number was something like 60, 60 goals last season in the league, which is, is far, far, far too many. Now, we scored the most goals in the league last season, but I think we also conceded the most goals in the, in the league last season. And he's come in and he signed Katic and Goldson, brought back Alan McGregor. Bringing back Alan McGregor was, was fantastic. We needed a new goalkeeper, and it seemed that Gerrard was the only person that actually realised that that was a problem. But was obviously Warburton brought in uh, Fordenham again, a keeper that I do not rate. And bringing back Alan McGregor was a no-brainer, and he was outstanding last night. Made two tremendous saves there towards the end. Just a, a real top keeper. And as Gerard says, it's a shame that he's not 25 years old. But the thing that's good about goalkeepers is that they can obviously play on to a later age. So maybe we might still get another two or three seasons out of him, certainly. Katic was absolutely outstanding last night. Very, very good defensively. Golds has been brilliant defensively as well. Just fantastic from, from, from the team, really. Tavernier, of course, the captain, leading by example out there. Then you had obviously Scott Arfield and then Halliday who came on for him later on. 
as obviously they, they both put in like a hell of a shift out there. And then you have obviously Lafferty came on at half time because as I obviously spoke to someone, we agreed with the Aberdeen game that we did need an attacking outlet up there. And Lafferty is someone who you can bring on, he can hold the ball up, and he's he's obviously physical, and he's he's obviously got a little bit of quality about him as well. So it was a no brainer really to bring him on. I mean, obviously you'd say in a situation, you know, who do you bring off? But obviously with, with Gerard, you know, obviously he he knew obviously what he was doing regarding that. And then you obviously you look at you look at Ryan Jack last night. He was absolutely outstanding. Even uh, towards the end of the game, when obviously the the ball was breaking with Ryan Jack a lot, who was was excellent to be honest. He was that kind of one player because he had that bit of pace, was getting us out of tight situations, getting us forward. And to be honest, if he had his head up a bit more, then I think there could possibly have been a winner. Which you know it sounds insane when you're playing with uh, ten men for forty. 40 plus minutes, maybe a, I bet 40, 42 minutes, I think those are maybe 50 minutes, but for a long time anyway. And then you're playing nearly half an hour with nine men, which is just insane. And to say the fact that we didn't concede in that period of time and we kind of held on, okay, uh, they obviously got the, the corner there at the end and probably a soft decision for them not to get the goal. But then when you look at the decisions that went against us, you kind of have to think, well. It kind of, I wouldn't say it evens itself out, but I would say that you know, you know, you kind of look at the decisions that obviously we didn't get, and then they didn't get the goal. It's it's kind of a, a small kind of deal, and the fact that that kind of second sending off, and obviously the first sending off from from Morelos could have certainly cost us the game, and uh, the the second sending off, you're kind of thinking, oh, how, how are we going to hold on here? Because one one, all all they need is two goals to get one goal, and then they've got loads and loads of time to get another one. But the, the team held strong. They were absolutely tremendous. I mean, I can't really... I honestly have to say, I've never been prouder to be a Rangers fan. That is how much... How proud and how much those players impressed last night. It showed what it meant to play for, for Rangers. It showed what it meant to pull on that light blue jersey. And it inspired me. It inspired me to, for, for the first time in a long time, do a video and you know to discuss it. Now, going back to, obviously, the players, well, Ejaria, for me, was man of the match. He was absolutely outstanding. Obviously, he scored the, the opening goal. It was the away goal, the crucial goal. A very well-taken goal inside the box. Top corner. No chance for the goalkeeper. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant last night. I thought he was man of the match, to be honest. There's obviously... The, 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 kind, of, the kind of thing about that is, as well, is... You could say that all nine of those players were man of the match because what they did last night was nothing short of remarkable. I'm just making sure that I'm not missing out any players here, certainly. Lafferty. Hattic. I don't think that I am. I would feel really, really bad if I was because... I mean, as, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned with obviously the match on Sunday, win, lose or draw... What Steven Gerrard has done, what these players have done has been fantastic. And I'm very, very happy with how things are going. I mean, obviously, I would want to beat Celtic at Parkhead on Sunday. It's never, ever easy going to Parkhead. And also, and I'm not saying this to make excuses, but after the exertions of uh, those nine players in the in the match there against Ufa, I've got to kind of say it's going to be very, very difficult. But at the same time, you know, we haven't lost this season. You know, we could easily have uh, certainly lost the game against... Just try and think. Who was that again against? Oh man! Uh, was it the game we played at the weekend? Oh, it was against Motherwell. I was right. The, that's what I was thinking. The game against Motherwell, and of course it was the the Peter Hartley player that scored the equaliser. The one that was all in the headlines was laughing about the fact that one of the uh, Cardozo's nose was bleeding and all that from a challenge. I mean, absolutely ridiculous to be honest. Uh, the we played a three five two in that game. The team just looked very kind of disjointed from it. But fortunately, there against uh, Ufa, we went back to the four five one, which has been working very very well. Obviously, we went to ten men, nine men, and that obviously kind of went out the window. But I, I I honestly couldn't be more prouder of these players. What what they achieved last night was fantastic, and I think, as I say, win, lose, or or draw on Sunday, these players deserve a huge huge amount of credit. I deserve to be seen as, as heroes because for me that that's what they are. I mean, 
Rangers are, are, are back in the, the kind of group stages of a European tournament now in the Europa League group stages. We've been drawn with Villarreal, Rapid Vienne, and uh, so Spartak Moscow. Now, it certainly could have been a harder group, but it's, it's certainly not going to be easy. And if obviously if we do go out of the group, which which people obviously would expect us to, I think regardless, it was a tremendous achievement to get through those qualifying rounds, to be undefeated in Europe, undefeated in the league. And it, it's just it's just a great, great time to be a Rangers fan. And um, the, the news, that there's a kind of rumours that maybe Stephen Davis might be coming back. Now, obviously, when this video drops, we'll probably know whether or not he's, he's come back or not. But anyway, that's, that's, that's it, really. That's um that's everything. Cheers.